Hello, this is Carol Churchill. Uh, this is uh, another segment of Chamber Chatter. And as you see, we're not in the studio today. We are in the beautiful Envision Hotel, the first hotel in the city of Everett. And with me is Matt and Dana. And maybe you want to introduce yourself and just say a little bit about how exciting it is to, to be here and uh, when the hotel opened and, and that type of thing. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming to Envision Hotel Boston Everett. Uh, we opened on April 7th. Uh, super excited about being the first hotel in Everett. We've had a lot of the community already coming in to do the tours and wander around the hallways. We've had a lot of family as well of Everett uh, community staying with us already. So super excited about that. Uh, I'm Dana, I'm the general manager, and uh, this is Matthew, the director of sales. Yeah, yeah, Dan and I have been with the company for a couple of years now. We both transitioned from our second location down to Longwood Meadow area. Okay. Um, so, you know, as soon as the company decided to open this up, we both, you know, hopped on board and it was such a ride. And um, just, you know, talking to everybody at City Hall and everybody in, you know, downtown Everett, everybody knows each other and it's such a great community. Yeah. Oh, so, it is. It's a, it's a small city. It's just like a, a close-knit community. Mm -hmm. and uh, makes it very special, very special place. Now, um, you've already had a lot of sold out nights here, I understand? Oh, absolutely busy. So, yeah. We've been really fortunate. Uh, when we first opened, obviously it took a little time for the hotel to be recognized uh, online. It's just amazing the power of the internet these days and, mm -hmm. and what that does. Um, a lot of first time transient guests as well as corporate guests coming into Everett. Uh, so we've had great success. Uh, tonight we are almost sold out. We were, we've been sold out since uh, last Tuesday, I believe. And luckily with the Celtics win last night, that will <laughs> hopefully bring some um, room nights for the Eastern Conference uh, Finals as well. Great. Now, what, what kind of guests uh, do, you, do you typically see here? I know it's a mix, but... Yeah, yeah, so definitely definitely a lot of transient guests, a lot of people coming in um, specifically for the conference center. Um, okay. There was just a large convention, and there's so many, you know, as soon as May ramps up, there's so many conventions going on in the city. It's bringing a lot of people from all around the world to come to Boston to come to these large conventions. Um, so we see a lot of that. We see a lot of people coming in from the airline as well, okay. you know, from the airport just coming by. Just because we're only a couple of miles away, it's such a short drive. Mm -hmm. that even people who have like a layover or just want to spend a day in the city, we're finding that a lot of people are coming from the airport as well. Oh. And your price point is a bit lower than the, the new Chelsea hotels, as I understand it. So that makes you even more attractive, I would think. We, not, to, not to, you know. We, you know, we, we definitely have always, as a company for Envision Hotels, have always said we want to provide an excellent, uh, decorative hotel at a, at a good price and that's what we like to provide every guest and you know the Chelsea hotels are beautiful yeah. and uh, we're really fortunate to be next door to them uh, but we're also happy to get a lot more business because of uh, our price and attractive hotel too. Mm -hmm. And your employees. Fantastic. Okay. It's amazing you know uh, thank you for recognizing them a lot of them are from Everett mm -hmm. you know first time employees to even working in a hotel. And if you go on TripAdvisor, our hotel has had 10 fantastic TripAdvisor reviews and they've all been mentioning the staff and the team and a lot of direct name recognition, mm -hmm. which is really, really difficult in its own sense to get a yes. review like that. So they're super pumped up that they're getting all of this oh, that's recognition. Great. Yeah, that's great. It's exciting. Now, how many employees work here? We have about 30 total. Okay. Most of them are in the housekeeping staff. Um, mm -hmm. Because today we were sold out, we had a very large checkout. Uh, we have about 10 housekeeping staff uh, on hand today. So it's a pretty big department. Okay. And how many rooms do you have here? 101 rooms. Oh, okay. Pretty good size. It's mostly split. It's almost split in half between king size bedrooms and then we have uh, rooms with two queen size beds. Mm -hmm. So uh, travelers, a lot of families have stayed here. The rooms are very large, and maybe we'll take a tour later. Uh, so you could fit a family of four, five, no problem. Okay. And I've been to the rooms, and they are. They're very yeah, nice. Thank you. <laughs> and they have, um, now, do they all have the maps 
on the walls, the maps of Everett yep. and the, the surrounding areas? Yeah, so that's something that's a staple of all of our Envision hotels moving forward. Oh. Um, because, you know, we're located in the Everett area, we have a map of the Everett Revere area. Okay. Um, we also have another location in South St. Paul, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. So if you go over to that hotel, you see a backdrop of downtown St. Paul. So e each hotel is kind of like an homage to the area that it's in. Um, so, okay. yeah, we wanted to keep that as like a nice staple in every room. And then you also, um, as we see here with the sewing machine, there's, there's a lot of... Um, you know, older types of, you know, sewing machine type, shoe type things going on here. So can you just tell a little bit about that? Well, I'll have to give props to our company's interior designer, Jessica Smith, who okay. was at the ribbon cutting. Super, super lovely lady, very talented. Uh, her mission when the company asked her to help design this Envision Hotel concept was to really recognize the history of the community. And, you know, speaking on the Everett Chamber chatter, we would love if anybody knows anything about the history of this building, we welcome those stories because um, we had a lot of guests come in and they said, oh, my grandmother, my great aunt used to work in this building. Oh, really? So wow. it used to be a sewing factory. So the interior designer really wanted to recognize and, uh, and show appreciation to what this building uh, used to do for the community. Okay. And uh, what are some of the other amenities you have here? We have an excellent fitness center uh, that's attached to this building. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, a lot of guests who are traveling on business are used to very small fitness centers. This is just a huge open space with state-of-the-art equipment and we have also the bistro against the green bistro mm -hmm. that serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So, which is hopefully down the road going to be more popular for the community to come in and enjoy a glass of wine or, or a glass of beer. Uh, we also use a lot of local breweries, mm -hmm. hoping that uh, down the road we'll be able to get Night Shift Brewery uh, oh, wow. in here, which is yeah. very exciting for them as they grow, mm -hmm. a Bone Up Brewery. Uh, so we like to give a little bit of the local feel inside of our hotels. And um, do you have any plans for the future? I know you just opened, and <laughs> you know it's like let's let's get through the let's get through the opening first. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it still smells new. It's just yeah, um, it's if, if, if you if you haven't come and see in this hotel, you really have to have to experience it for yourself. It's just just amazing. Thank you. And um, uh, but I, I must ask, do you have any any plans going forward? You know, we're, I think we're always on the edge of our seats with our company, which okay. is exactly why we enjoy working for Envision uh -huh. Hotels. Uh, this has been the pride and joy of this company. That's the, their flagship, even with the Envision Hotel and Longwood uh, mm -hmm. Medical Center. Um, you know, we've just been very fortunate with the local community, even in Jamaica Plain, Mission Hill of Boston. It's, they've just been as kind and gracious as ever it's been. I, I hope to see more opportunities. I hear there are opportunities of opening new hotels. Uh, we usually don't know until the day of. <laughs> oh, okay. You like to keep us in anticipation. Yeah, exactly. there, you go. there you go. Well, now, um, you said you had the Longwood um, Hotel in, as part of the, the Envision family. How long has that hotel been uh, in existence? I, I, th I think it's going out six years in July. Yeah, a little, little over five years now. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. And why did the company select Everett as, as the number, you know, number two hotel in the Boston area? Well, uh, the, the ownership is from Massachusetts, okay. uh, from the Nita, Massachusetts area. Oh, okay. yeah, and they saw that Everett was kind of an unrecognized city. They were, they were focusing on this city for a little while because they, obviously the hotel world is a really small community. Right. When you work, you know, maybe in your industry as well, you realize how small it is. Mm -hmm. So they obviously saw the Chelsea development, the Revere development, and they said, you know, why don't we open this hotel in Everett, Massachusetts? And one thing led into the other, mm -hmm. And um, the owners of this building met with the hotel ownership company, and it was just a great start to begin with, and here we are right now. 
Oh, that's great. That's great. And I mean, just being the first hotel in Everett, I'm sure, I mean, that alone is very exciting. And from what I understand from other businesses, um, the mayor's office and everyone in City Hall really makes it easy for companies to come into the city. Oh, so yeah. that's a big plus as well. Oh my God, yeah, we, we are so thankful for all the help that the City Hall, everyone downtown, the Chamber of Commerce, like everyone has welcomed us with open arms. That's so, great. So, you know, every day we we're always yeah. like, oh, I've been telling my family, I've been telling my brother who works here. Everyone's been so good about just like spreading the word. It's, it's, we're so thankful for everyone, you know, in the community that's been helping out so far. Well, it doesn't surprise me because that's what Everett's all about. It's, yeah. just, it's just, I mean, it's just a great, great city. And I mean, I can't say enough good things about it. So oh, I, thank I, you. I'm, not, I'm not surprised at all. Here. So yeah, we've been very, very happy here. Now, is there anything else that we haven't talked about? That, oh, well, how about transportation? If someone wants uh, transportation to go to, you know, a, a conference in the area, or if they're visiting family and you know they didn't have, they didn't rent a car. What kind of services do you provide to get guests to and from? Yeah. So so moving forward, you know, the direction that our country's going is mm -hmm. is the whole shared economy. Yeah. Um, so a lot of times we do get calls. How do I get downtown? We always recommend using Uber or Lyft. Mm -hmm. um, they're two very easy apps that people can download on their phone in a, you know a couple of minutes. And the average wait time for an Uber or Lyft driver takes like two or three minutes to pick you up from the hotel. Um, and since we are so close to the airport, it's maybe a ten dollar to fifteen dollar ride from the airport and like a fifteen dollar ride downtown. Mm -hmm. um, and we found that guests have just been finding it so easy to use to get around. So we always just recommend using that. Good. We've also had been very fortunate with the local taxi businesses mm -hmm. in Everett, okay. Massachusetts, who have been extremely helpful and accommodating. Uh, fortunately, we didn't even have to go to them. They came to us mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. introduced our, uh, themselves. And the front desk is very, very lucky to have them for an on-the-demand need for mm -hmm. you know a taxi to get downtown at a Wellington station. Um, having the tea in Medford has definitely been a blessing. But also a challenge to some degree because of the sidewalk. It's not necessarily a, a walkable um, location for our guests. So transportation is obviously uh, needed, but with the parking there, it makes it a lot easier. And you do have food on site. Yes. So that's a big plus as well. Can you just speak a little bit to that? Yeah, yeah. As, as Danny mentioned earlier, we do have beer and wine served you know, during the evenings. Um, we try to keep it as local as possible. And um, in terms of uh, dinner options, we do have flatbread pizzas, we have salads, we have sandwiches. So it's more of like casual options during the evening. And then we always have grab and go sandwiches and salads available just okay. in case someone flies in at 2 a.m. and they are starving and you know, a lot of places are closed at that time. So we have food available around the clock and we also have um, breakfast options available in the morning as okay. well. Um, everything from egg sandwiches to you know, we have caribou coffee available. Most people around the area have never even heard of caribou coffee. That's from uh, uh, Minnesota, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. so from Minnesota. Okay. Yeah, we're so worth it. I've been to the Mall of America. I went to the Mall of America once when, when my daughter was a teenager with yeah. another teenage girl, and I don't remember again. But <laughs> yeah. anyway, I remember the caribou coffee there. Exactly, yeah, it's, very, it's really good. good. I didn't yeah. even try it myself until I, you know, until yeah. we opened this up, and I was like, this is really good. Um, so we're actually technically the first carrier of caribou coffee in the Northeast. Um, oh. So we're introducing it to a lot of travelers that have never even heard of it. Um, Excellent. So yeah, that's, you know, they can make everything from smoothies uh -huh. to, you know, lattes and the entire coffee bar is just like always packed in the morning. Oh, so, good. Yeah. It's a, it's a very, very open lobby uh -huh. area that we have. So a lot of guests are, you know, interacting with each other and we just wanted to create like that homey feel. And that's what we feel we, we get in our bistro area. Oh, you certainly have. You certainly have. Is there anything else that you want to mention? Anything we've forgotten to talk about? I think the Scrabble board. Just the, oh, yeah. just, Scrabble board, just, yeah. the, just the interaction that we have with all of our guests. Mm -hmm. And we have a Scrabble board much like we have in the lobby at all of the Envision hotels. Soon to be in the Longwood okay. Hotel. That's kind of our signature. And what that goal and representation is community. Mm -hmm. And we've had many guests, couples that come in and kind of been playing on their board by themselves. And we've also had uh, guests kind of mingle with everyone else. Front desk loves to jump in on a good game of Scrabble okay. at night if they have time. 
Uh, and it kind of just gives that sense of uh, openness, and that's, our, that's what our mission is, is to have a relationship with guests, and not necessarily just a, a check-in and check-out process. So if you were coming yourself, I mean, you could kind of, you know, jump right in, and, and you'd have some companionship if you wanted it, and you'd be left alone if you, if you wanted that. Mm -hmm. so. The, the, the property allows for privacy as well as mm -hmm. community at the same time, which is, which is really great for those that don't want to necessarily be right. interacting with guests. Good. Okay, well, I think that concludes another segment of Chamber Chatter. And we're sorry that Rosemary Hughes could not be with us today. She's, um, she's a bit under the weather, but we wish her a speedy recovery, and we hope uh, all of you have a chance to come and experience the hotel on your own very soon. Thank you, and thank you, Matt and Dana. Thank you, Carol. Appreciate it. Welcome to another segment of Chamber Chatter. I'm Carol Churchill, and unfortunately, Rosemary Hughes, uh, who I usually co-host the show with, is unable to be here today. But I'm here with uh, two people from Chica de Gallo. Chica de Gallo, and this is a company um, that's on Elm Street in Everett. And Amanda is in the middle. She's the owner of the company. And Kristen is mm -hmm. the marketing director. So um, we're here today to just talk about some of the wonderful products that they have. Um, the first thing, though, is why the name? Can you tell us a little bit about why you <laughs> named the company? Sure. Um, it's um, nothing too interesting. We just really like to have fun with puns. Okay. So we make pico de gallo, which is a type of chunky salsa. Uh -huh. And we were playing around one day just brainstorming and Chica de Gallo popped up. We all had a really great laugh and knew that that was the name for the company. I mean, it's just a very positive name. It kind of rolls off the tongue, so I can <laughs> see where I can see where it would be very appropriate for the products that you sell. Thank so. you. And uh, we have some of the products here in front of us. And can you just tell a little bit about um, you know the, the types of products and and what makes you different from your competition? Sure. Um, Kristen, do you want to actually describe all our products? Sure. Thank you. So we have your classic mild and medium salsa. Mm -hmm. um, what makes ours a little bit different is it's fresh, chunky. Um, so we basically use chopped vegetables that are you know freshly washed and cut up that day. Um, and then we uh, have a ghost pepper salsa if you like spicy, mm. which is really it's our favorite salsa. Definitely. Um, yeah. It's a little bit different than like a hot salsa that you could get you know in a jar at the supermarket mm -hmm. because it has this really slow kind of building heat to it, okay. which is my favorite part of it. So it's kind of a really kind of slow builder, which uh -huh. is really fun, but it's never going to be painful. Unless like you have ultra sensitive taste buds, <laughs> um, it's going to be more on the enjoyable side. Okay. Uh, then we have our mango pineapple salsa, mm -hmm. which is just a delicious salsa that you can eat with a chip. You can cook with it if you like fish tacos or veggie tacos. Um, it's really all of our products are really easy to use in cooking as well, just because it's just fruits and veggies, no preservatives. They're all vegan, um, and. And last but not least, our guacamole. Yep. So that okay. comes in mild and spicy ghost pepper as well. Okay. And I absolutely love the spicy ghost pepper on sandwiches. It gives you a nice clean heat oh. without like the vinegar tang of using, you know, um, a hot sauce or something like that. Oh, okay. So you use it instead of, say, mayonnaise or yes. mustard. You can mm -hmm. use it on sandwiches. Mm -hmm. And yep. I know this time of year uh, with everyone grilling, it's nice to. Burgers. Nice to, burgers to have some salsa or guacamole on yes. the burgers. Yeah, if you want a little Fish. extra zip, you can actually mix into your potato salad or coleslaw instead of your mayonnaise. Ah, very good idea. All right, yeah. I'll have to try that. <laughs> now, um, do you do you only sell wholesale? Um, no, so you can find us in a number of independent stores in okay. the region as well as Whole Foods. Okay, and then we do a number of farmers markets. So this year it is. Uh, Copley Square on Fridays, mm -hmm. Rosendale on Saturdays, and so on Sundays. Okay. And um, you can also find us at breweries. Okay. Where else I'm missing? Uh, food trucks around the city. Oh, restaurants. Okay. Yeah. So we Great. do a little bit of wholesale and uh, food service as well. Okay, so I think um, you had said earlier that some of the uh, uh, independent grocery stores mm -hmm. uh, are places that you can 
find your product yeah. more so than say a large well, stop and shop? Or? We, we do a little bit of both. So okay. Whole Foods is going to be one of our bigger stores, but okay. we also do stores like Foodies and South End. Uh -huh. um, we're in uh, you know Savinor's Market. Okay. You know we do really small and we do a little bit bigger too. Okay. And, you know, slowly expanding. We're we're very into both. Okay. We like both. <laughs> okay. And how long have you been in business? Um, four and a half years. Oh wow. So the first year okay. and a half, it was just nights and weekends. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of proof of concept. We were in one store for a year and a half. Yeah. Um, and then we decided to branch out. Mm -hmm. I actually quit my job. We started doing farmers markets, and it just went from there. And every year, we've at least doubled in growth. So we're looking forward to another strong year. Okay. Yeah. And um, why did you get into business? Why did you get into business for yourself? I mean, is there a oh, story know, behind it? We always made salsa and guacamole with um, friends and family. Mm -hmm. And you know the whole story. It's so good, you should sell it. So we started <laughs> to sell it. So you listen to your family yeah. and friends. And over the course of um, the business, we've actually revamped all of our recipes, come up with new recipes, and we actually just started a new food service line as well. Oh, okay. And what's that about? Um, so that's for, you know, restaurants, food trucks, anyone who's going to be serving it, not in our pretty containers, but mm -hmm. on a plate or on a sandwich. Um, so we have a few new products that are specifically designed for being in a restaurant or for being on top of a burger. Okay. Yeah. And I know that uh, many of us, you know, dream about opening up our own business someday. Um, what have you found to be the most gratifying? Oh, it's part of being in your own business. Fantastic. I love being my own boss, even though I still have to answer to my partner. Oh, you always have to answer to somebody. <laughs> <You> always <laughs> have to answer. <laughs> but the freedom to, you know, come up with new things, to be creative. Um, uh -huh. I just had a son, so I actually get to bring him to work with me. Oh, that's and great. Kristen. I reap the benefits. Yeah, she ends up being the babysitter. <laughs> <laughs> but little baby yeah. Ben, uh, it's, it's great because as much uh, as we put our heart and soul into this and work a ton, we get to really have a family both with our blood family and with our work family. And Kristen's yeah. been with, you've been I with mean, the I mean, I've been there for a while now and I uh -huh. feel like I'm part of the team. And I don't know, there are benefits like working with, with Amanda and Ben, like, it uh it's just it's very it's very pleasant a very pleasant experience i've learned mm -hmm. so much i've learned you know i've seen everything that they do everything that they have to do as owners mm -hmm. and um just being there to see that and to learn is it's been such a cool experience for me because i haven't worked in a small business like this before and that's what's nice about a small business you kind of get involved in every aspect of the business uh -huh. you see things that you would never see if you were compartmentalized yeah, in I've, a larger company so. right I've learned so much and yeah. it's been a great experience. And I will say like moving to Everett was a really exciting big step for uh -huh. the company. It's like allowed us to do things like, you know, make the, the food service line and to produce so much more and uh, to start building a staff. Like our staff is, um, our kitchen staff is mainly um, Everett residents, which is okay. awesome. So we've been, been able to communicate more and, and be more involved in, in this and also grow as a company, which is really cool. And how many employees do you have? Right now, um, we have 10 employees based in Everett and then uh -huh. a few employees who, you know, pop in to do uh, demos or farmer's markets, just kind of fill in off-site. Okay, part-time employees. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what made you choose Everett? So we really wanted to be near the Chelsea Produce Terminal. Um, oh, okay. And so we started looking around um, neighboring cities, so Chelsea, Everett, around there, and we actually worked really closely with a tortilla chip company, mm -hmm. um, and we've been working with them for several years. They were vacating their spot in Everett, and mm -hmm. we were able to grab it. Oh, that's you know, perfect timing then. Kind of worked Definitely. out perfectly. Serendipitous, as they say. Yes. So. <laughs> that's nice. And uh, do you have any plans for the future? I know you're still a young company, but oh, any um, plans on the horizon? Definitely. So we have a number of uh, retail chains that will hopefully be carrying our products in the next month or so. Oh, cool. um, yes, not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, and we are growing our food service line, as I'd mentioned before. Uh -huh. And um, we have a few new products that we're gonna be, you know, playing around with and introducing at farmers markets where we do most of our market testing. Okay. Yeah. And Kristen, as um, as marketing director. Uh, 
you're trying to get into more and more um, retail establishments, farmers markets. Yeah, uh, I would say my focus, my focus is, well, we just started to touch upon advertising. Mm -hmm. It's a, to a whole new realm for yeah. me, um, for us, I think, to learning about. Um, but yeah, you know, just trying to get um, you know our name out in in creative ways uh -huh. like you know we're a small company so yep. it's it's fun it's really fun for me to find you know cool new magazines or mm -hmm. newspapers or something some way that we can get our get get our name out there um, and in terms of you know sales like finding new stores definitely local is always really important to us mm -hmm. uh, right now we're in Massachusetts Connecticut Rhode Island and New Hampshire Okay. And I'm really just focusing on building up, you know, building up mm -hmm. those areas, um, keeping a strong, you know, connection. Uh, we have our brand ambassador uh, go around. We do lots of demos so that, you know, our customers can try our product and get to know it, get to know us. Mm -hmm. uh, so just really building up this area and, of course, expanding beyond. Um, yep. So a little bit of everything. And I know that mm -hmm. there's a big emphasis right now um, to buy local, to buy mm -hmm. from local companies, yeah. and um, and I mean the farmers markets have really taken off. So mm -hmm. I think that yeah. um, you know your, your your niche is you know very it's very timely yeah. and it, you know it's what people are looking for right now. So yeah, and that's that's, that's really how you know we started. I mean the farmers markets is like the 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 root. You know mm -hmm. uh, you know besides that one store that we're in, which which got them in in the yep. in the business in the business. <laughs> Uh, the farmers markets are great because you really make that connection with people. You really get people trying it and meeting mm -hmm. you and finding out, who, you know, finding out who I am, who they are, and uh, from there, you know, you make the connection that, oh yeah, you're in this store. Great. Well, maybe you know, I'll buy that next time I, I mm -hmm. see it because I know this company and I yep. like their product. Yep. So it's it's really cool. It's really cool to see it all kind mm -hmm. of making sense now after a few yep. years. Yeah. And um, the city of Everett, did they make it easy for you to establish your business? Definitely. City, so city we got Hall. a lot of help um, before we even uh, moved over to Everett. We were calling around to a number of departments in Everett and mm -hmm. um, getting their advice and help. So it was a fairly smooth transition. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. I've heard that from so many small businesses that, Definitely. you know, the city hall was welcoming. They answered questions. Um, you know, they were responsive when you had questions. Uh, it's so been a really positive experience. Good. And the yeah. people in Everett have been great too. Um, we constantly have people knocking on our door looking uh -huh. for a job and everyone we've hired has been fantastic. We actually are still hiring, so if you're looking for a job, <laughs> come knock okay. on the door, All right. fill out an application, we'd be happy to have you. Okay, great. Well, is there anything that we've forgotten to say about your products, about your company, about your employees? Have we hit on everything? Or? I think we have. Okay. We have a fantastic company, fantastic products, and fantastic employees. Well, yeah. I have tried them. Um, I know that they sell them at my local grocery store. I have purchased them there. Okay. And um, and now I know the people behind the products, so yeah. it makes it even more interesting. So yeah. um, I wish you the best of luck Thank going you. forward. And. Um, and I am definitely going to try some of these products here as soon as um, Bobby and Matt turn the cameras off. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming today. And, um, and thank you all for, uh, for joining us for another segment of Chamber Chatter. Thank you. Thank you.